Thank you. Life is an adventure, right? It's meant to be explored. So why then is it that venturing out into the unknown, starting something new, getting up and speaking in front of people can be so absolutely terrifying? Why is that? We don't have control over the outcome. We don't know whether we'll win or lose. Maybe we start, in a, start out in a new relationship. We get our heart broken. So do we let this fear of the unknown, of uncertainty, do we let it stop us from pursuing our goals, from chasing our dreams? Maybe, yeah, a little nod over there. Or do we walk through the fear, find the courage within, and accomplish our goals in order to achieve our dreams? As um, Amber said, my name is Parvati. I did survive on an island, and I will just address the questions on everyone's mind right now. Yes, I did eat bugs. <laughs> and no, I didn't hook up with anyone on the island. Girl. So, thank you. Yes, my mom's really proud of me. Uh, <laughs> and because of the way that I played that game, I, I made bold moves, I took big risks. Fans will come up to me on the street, and they'll reach out to me on social media, and they will call me fearless. I get this a lot, and it's flattering to hear that about yourself, but I have to admit, it's really not true. I'm not fearless. Courageous maybe, if we're going by Marion Williamson's definition, which is courage is not the absence of fear, but the ability to act in the face of fear. You've heard that one? Yeah, I love that. So, okay, yeah, I'm courageous, but fearless, definitely not. I will tell you guys a story. Shortly after I finished my last go round on the island, CBS called me and they asked me to host a travel show called Around the World for Free. Yes, I was in. I have always wanted to host a travel show. It has always been my dream. Where do I sign up? They're like, well, don't you want to know what this is about? And I said, oh, yeah, sure. Tell me what I'm getting myself into. Okay, well, the premise of the show is you're going to be traveling around the world for 100 days. You're going to be producing and hosting 50 episodes, so that's about one every other day for this journey. And the catch is you have zero dollars in your pocket. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, right. And you have to rely on the kindness of strangers and people reaching out on social media to get you from place to place. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that sounds good. But I'll have a, an emergency credit card, right? I mean, naturally. I mean, you get that in college, don't you? Your parents get an emergency <laughs> credit card. Uh, no, there is no credit card. There is no safety net. Are you still in? Okay, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. I can do this. I thought that I was brave. I thought that I had courage. But about two weeks out before I was supposed to start that show, I started getting these intense panic attacks. I was having so much anxiety. My, my throat would constrict. My chest would close up. My heart would beat really fast. I couldn't breathe. I was like, oh my god, what's happening to me? I feel like I'm dying. I was so afraid of what I had just gotten myself into. Maybe some of you can understand. You're all achievers here, high achievers. You get yourself into something that maybe is a little bit more than you bargained for. You bit off a little more than you can chew. So during one of those moments, my phone rings. It's my mom. She says, Park, what are you freaking out about? This is your dream. You should be excited. Get out there. Paint with all the colors of the wind. You love Pocahontas. I said, Mom, it's not funny. I'm really freaking out. This is scary. Um, and she goes, she, you know, she goes, OK, you guys do this with me because we're going to have an experience together. She says, put your hand on your heart. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Trust yourself. Your entire life has prepared you for this moment. Your heart has an intelligence of its own. It will guide you to the right people and the right places. And remember, whenever you get stuck, whenever you feel overwhelmed, whenever things aren't working out for you, just remember, you only need one. I opened my eyes. I was like, Mom, OK, that was really relaxing for a moment. But what do you mean I only need one? What does that mean? She said. You only need 
one person to respond to your messages, one person to reach out and touch you, one person to come pick you up, one ride, one ticket booked, you only need one and then the next one will show up. It's that simple. You always only need one. Well, this was pretty profound for me. I mean, mother's wisdom, who would have thought? <laughs> My mom's kind of a basket case. Like, I, um, <laughs> I said, wow, okay, I get it. And I took that into the rest of my life in a really big way. And I'll come back to the Around the World for Free story. We'll get back to that. But right now I want to explain to you how I use this mantra. Mantra is a mental tool that we use to focus our mind, for those of you that don't know, um, in other areas of my life. So one big area that some of you may be able to relate to is the perilous world of dating. Yeah, you only need one. <laughs> okay, I was, I mean, a few years ago, I decided I really wanted to be in a committed relationship. I wanted a partner, and I was ready for that. So I went out there, you do what you gotta do, right? You date. So I did it. I went on a bunch of dates, and you know, dating in Los Angeles, it really leaves a lot to be desired. I remember one guy asking me to go to a fashion show, and he comes and picks me up. I put on my most fashionable dress, put on my high heels. I'm like so excited about this fashion show. He picks me up in a low ride hoopty, takes me to a thumb wrestling party, downtown LA, under an overpass, across from a federal prison. <laughs> Not exactly a fashion show. No second date. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, after that, I mean, I went through a string of really bad dates, and I just got to the point where I was like, I don't think it's going to happen for me. I really want this. I really want a relationship. I want a partner. But maybe it's not meant for me. Maybe I should just get that apartment, fill it up with cats, and just live my life. <laughs> and, and I was almost ready to do it. I had the lease in my hand. I'm just kidding. Um, and I thought about my mother's words. You only need one. You only need one. You only need one. You only need one. Okay. There are seven billion people in this planet. There's got to be one good guy out there. <laughs> Come on. So I went back out there. I got back into the arena. I fought the good fight. And finally, I found him. I found my one. He's loving and warm and adventurous, and we can grow together. And recently, I witnessed this mantra working in his life. So we moved to New York City about a year ago, and he started business school at Columbia. Right off the bat, everyone is very concerned with uh, securing a summer internship. Maybe some of you know how important it is to get that summer internship because it can lead to a job right out of college. That alleviates a big uncertainty right there. So he is staying up late into the night, working cases, um, doing mock interviews with his fellow students, getting mentored by his teachers. And the first round of interviews come, and he aces them, sails right through. So it seems the wind's at his back. He's doing well. But all of a sudden, the second round of interviews come, and the energy shifted. Things have changed, and they're not going so well. It's door after door closing. No. And after one particularly bad interview, I remember him coming home and just throwing his hands in the air and saying, that's it. I've peaked. No one's going to hire me. I'm unemployable. I'm a total failure. I might as well just end it now. It's like, OK, babe, we're going to have to take a deep breath. It's hard. You know, you, you don't want to see your loved one suffering, right? So I'm thinking, OK, what can I do? What can I do? How can I help? Aha. My mother's wisdom. You only need one. OK, let's put our hands back on our hearts. Let's go there. Close your eyes. Deep breath in. You are not a mountain. You are a mountain range with many peaks and many valleys. I know right now it seems like things aren't working out for you. It seems like everyone is saying no and doors are closing in your face. But if you can keep going, if you can persevere, and if you remember you only need one. You only need one person to see the value in you. One job offer, one handshake, one door to open, one yes. All those no's will fall away. They won't matter. 
he opened his eyes, he went back out there reinvigorated, and he, after a few more bad interviews, got one. He got his summer internship, and now I'm happy to say he's been working for the past couple of weeks, and he loves it. <coughs> so, you see how this has worked in my life since then. So should we go back to Around the World for Free? Let's wrap that up. Okay, so I'm still panicking. The day of the show arrives. I'm freaking out. I am hyperventilating, so I do what any rational 20-something-year-old will do in a time of crisis. I went to my friends on Twitter. And I said, okay, who's going to help me? Boom. There is a woman named Shanghai Kate. She's a rock star, 80-year-old tattoo artist. She lives in Austin. She, her message to me said, if you can get to Austin, I will give you a tattoo. That's it. I had it. My stake in the ground, a goal to plant my sights on, and I went for it. And it worked. It was incredible. I blew my own mind. I was blown away by the generosity, the kindness, the support of people reaching out, wanting to help. I made it to Austin. I got my tattoo. I hung out with Shanghai Kate. She's amazing. And, uh, and I reaffirmed my faith in humanity from doing that show. Survivor is pretty brutal, so it was helpful for me to do that. So what did I learn from this? I learned that you can use this mantra whenever you're going out into the world. And as college students, you guys do this every day. You're picking a major. You're trying to find your place in the world. You're on an... You're on a journey of exploration, just like I was on Around the World for Free. And if you can remember, whenever you are starting to feel stuck, whenever you're feeling overwhelmed, there are too many choices out there. I don't know, how am I going to pick a job? How am I going to pick a major? Or maybe there aren't enough choices. I don't know. I mean, nothing really appeals to me. Nothing sounds good. No one's saying yes. Or maybe you've tried everything. Things just aren't working out and you're just feeling stuck and you're ready to give up. If you can close your eyes, listen to the wisdom of your heart. There are 40,000 neurons in your heart. It has an intelligence of its own. It will lead you. It will guide you. Listen to that wisdom. Trust yourself. Keep going. And remember, you only need what? One. You got it. You only need one. Thank you.